some uh, uh, key statements about how can CFD help in all those design challenges and go to, through some more details in some specific cases about some CFD simulation capabilities already available in, uh, in our uh, current uh, previous experiences. And we continue with the state-of-the-art CFD technologies, which are uh, fundamental for uh, performing this kind of analysis. And uh, we present a couple of case studies and summarize at the end. Uh, okay, this uh, a little bit about the overview about the company. We are a group of engineers from cross industry experience with expertise in multiple domains, disciplines like FBA and CFD, as well as integrity management for flow, evaluation, material, corrosion, and data analytics. Uh, we are based on Houston and Houston, Texas, and we have some remote or satellite offices in different uh, uh, cities in US and some others outside uh, around the world. Uh, some partner, important partnership in India too. Uh, as my colleague mentioned before, we are a partner, uh, solution partner with the South System. So we actually sell uh, similar products like Abacus, ISI, FE, FEA, Tosca, and CF, the uh, 3D experience. And of course, together with it, it comes uh, not just the software, but also some training and engineering services. And uh, finally, we also provide some uh, 3D printing and additive manufacturing simulation services. Here are like uh, the six main features of what, what I already say. So together with the software solution, we provide consultancy services, testing solutions, data analytics solution, training for any of the software that we have available as well as our solutions. Okay, let's start with the with the topic. Now, challenges in marine and offshore industry, which might be one of the uh, key uh, topics of interest. So, this is a, a small. This is a, most, a small list of some of the typical challenges that you, uh, most of the uh, marine architects and uh, engineers working in this area will find. So the most straightforward, the fluid resistant minimization for high speed boats and or, uh, general ships, prediction of hydrodynamic effort for wave impact uh, on a hull and for varying in sea stages like hogging and sagging. Slamming on a hull is also very uh, common issue of concern and what are the stresses that it may cause. Uh, the, ripping and springing issues that uh, is typical concern for long ships. Uh, prope propeller issues, for propeller cavitation effects and noise produced due to that phenomenon, as well as sloshing in tanks resulting for resu and resultant loads in the structure due to that phenomenon, uh, commonly for the transportation of liquids uh, like LNG and all of, um, also uh, fuel uh, transportation and others. And of course, the typical BIM motion, mostly for uh, fixed offshore structures, but some others uh, related phenomena of that. So um, these are just some that I, the, of the issues I presented, and I wanted to highlight how CFD provide solution for them. So uh, the, the biggest advantages why we use CFD for that are in some way summarized here, but of course there are many more details. And we will actually go through some. Uh, we have the opportunity doing CFD to provide prediction uh, analysis of proportion, proportion phenomena such as propeller, ship, rotor interaction. So you, we have everything at the same time in the same simulation the propeller, the chip, or the hull, and the rotor. So the interaction of 
everyone uh, with the other one are considered in in this in the CFD analysis together of course with all the other dynamic and cavitation effects that are commonly happening in simultaneously in the process. So we can also generate different C stage C state states and uh, time accurate simulation for wave propagation and study wave impact, uh, which is actually a, a very much issue of concern. So where is the wave impact and how much is it uh, happening? Um, uh, the third point, which is simulation uh, of breaking wave and induced motion of the formation of the structure is actually a very uh, much state of the art technology in some way, or it, although it has been done in the past since already some time, but the biggest difference is that now with the new CFD technologies, we can do what, what which is called FSI, fluid structure interaction, and we can include the, the wave and the load from the other side. And about the breaking wave is because I highlight that part because it is something uh, that is only available in using CFD tools uh, because the uh, commonly approach of potential flow theory will not be able to uh, compute the breaking wave or higher other waves like it is, uh, like it used to be in the past. Ship slamming, grimping, and sprinkling issues can be simulated and added to the optimization of the ship design. And uh, uh, this is a little bit what I mentioned before, the hydrodynamic responses and uh, induced loads uh, for uh, the dynamic fluid structure interaction. Okay, let's go to some uh, key issues and a quick solution for them. So we have on here summarizing a list of the issues that we have had experience using CFD and in some cases a, a couple with FEA for providing solution to industrial projects. Uh, it includes a C stage generation, so we're looking at the different C stages to improve, optimize the design, and of course, C keeping and maneuverability it comes uh, after applying those C stages for that. Uh, then we can work also in the optimization, so there are some software optimization that uh, can be typically used and applied together with these simulation tools for improving and optimizing design. Cavitation control, this is, uh, uh, there are some special models to compute cavitation that are available now in uh, some commercial tools and we are using that successfully, uh, some experiences already uh, on controlling and minimizing the cavitation. The fluid resistance analysis on a whole and of course the the minim minimization of that uh, fluid resistance is a typical concern. The sloshing in ship and tank, as well as weight impact and all slamming, all of them are related as uh, what an impact um, uh, all was the, the, how does it affect the structure. Uh, the sloshing is a typical concern on transportation of fluid, but the others are, all, external fluid loads and the sludge internal fluid loads. Uh, the other uh, issues of concern will be the VIM, uh, typically for ships and offshore structures that are uh, attached on, or usually uh, not fixed structure, but like a floating structures. And uh, vessel wind loading and dispersions for uh, typical accidents. So going through some of them, what are the options we have to do that? So or how do we do that? So in the case of the CSTA generation, uh, we can do um, the simulation of the waves and the different C states uh, by using the typical first order wave theory, five order, Peer, Morrison, Johansson, and irregular C stages, depending on the case of interest. Yeah, uh, so option, but not just the waves at the input that we see on the example below, but also uh, we have the option to uh, include the beach uh, simulation or the reflector or radiated waves due to 
boundaries due to external structures, due to multi holes, vessels, and uh, things like that. Uh, for seakeeping and maneuverability, we can perform the vessel response utilizing motion of RAO, or as well as uh, motion analysis of vessels like displacement, rotation, and velocity. So that's actually uh, something that uh, is a little bit high demanding computational talking, but uh, definitely much more uh, accurate than using the standard potential flow theory like it used to be in the past. So what, I, we, are, what we are inviting is to start using these new these tools that which are now available and um, we can uh, get the best of that and improve our design. So this is part of the capability that we are offering and that we also invite our colleagues to start using. So the best interaction with very C stages and wave heading directions is also a typical uh, topic of interest when we do that work. And of course, the hydrodynamic loading on the holes to pressures or forces and overturning moments are part of the output. Uh, for the um, uh, proportion, uh, the proportion effects, uh, we do this simple propeller and multi-propeller simulation, and uh, we for could be for a sea state, but also on um, transient phenomena. So there are different approaches depending moving measures or so rotating bodies, uh, as well as uh, looking at the propeller rather interaction, uh, not just the the propeller itself, which is typically the the information you get on the sign, but also how it interacts with the rest of the body. And uh, similarly, what what is the other dynamic loads and pressure on on the blades, and um, what is the asymmetry on the loads of the of the propeller depending location and um, velocities and uh, also depending the the C stage that how is it affecting the proportion. So simulation of uh, the proportion enhancing devices and uh, the optimization, design optimization is uh, typically the second phase that you do after complete the simulation you use the uh, advanced optimization tools coupled with the CFD or FEA simulations to be uh, to come um, handle a final uh, optimized design. And uh, as I mentioned before, the propeller dynamic pitch, which is part of the solution of the, the transient simulation on the propeller on the operation. A little bit more specific, uh, an issue on the propeller is the cavitation. So the cavitation is a typical concern, is many times there. So what we do for that, we, uh, when they see the simulation, we can uh, locate and predict the onset of the cavitation around the propeller blades, as well as look at different angle of attacks of the propeller blades and the variable pitch that it produces. Uh, rates of collapse of cavitation bubbles on cavitation erosion and damage in the propeller. All of that will come from the CFD. Actually, it's quite quite accurate, I need to say, but based on my experience when we perform this analysis, because you get exactly the, the location and the window operation when that those issues are happening. Also, another uh, topic of interest on cavitation will be the noise. So by cavitation induced noise, uh, pressure low fluctuations uh, for uh, jets and boat design. And optimize the propeller blades on designs are a typically a final goal. So optimization software uh, uh, are usually run as a part of it. Uh, the fluid resistance, as I mentioned, that's an historical issue of concern. Um, chips, you, uh, there are several reasons why you want to do that. And uh, typically, looking at fuel optimization of the whole, uh, you have uh, the intention, of course, is always to predict that what's the fluid resistant forces in car water, and also, uh, which is uh, the typical case of interest, but then you can also go a little bit further away behind stormy conditions. 
apply uh, different speeds um, and also look at the, the hole with or without appendages, uh, so a bare or appendage hole, as well as uh, do, do a kind of parametrization of those appendages on the hole, as well as some dimensions and uh, friction coefficients and pressure drag forces can be easily extracted and not estimated anymore, but computed. Uh, as well as a uh, flow pattern, so you understand what is the fluid doing around your body and uh, take the strain lines, the pressure stagnation points, and all of the, the uh, features of the uh, fluid motion around your hole and then can be uh, improved according to the design that you observe and, and your interest and uh, using this optimization tool, you can improve that. Uh, Final result. The, the last point I wanted to highlight is uh, for those doing uh, the remote, remotely or autonomous operate on the water, on the water vehicles, the ROBs or the AUBs. Uh, this is actually a very powerful tool that is being used uh, actually for some of my students at University of Houston are doing that already. So it's actually a very useful tool because you. You say, have a lot of savings on the sign, and uh, you come out with the final prototype in very advanced level or an accuracy. Um, the final uh, uh, one more issue here is, of course, the, the ship tank sloshing. Uh, this has been an eternal issue on marine transportation. Uh, typically found nowadays with the LNG tanks and fuel tanks. Um, the issue of concern is usually looking at the natural frequency of the fluid motion for different feelings and dif uh, different conditions and different frequencies of operation. So the ship and tank design uh, might be modified uh, and then the design will be optimized to reduce those uh, uh, loads and the frequency of the load that should not be correlated with the natural frequency of my structure uh, supporting the load. Uh, finally, the stability and contaminant issues uh, and equipments and complete vessel due to moving the fluid. So it uh, will be not just the motion of the fluid, but also how is the vessel affected due to the time motion. Uh, one more thing that can be usually done in uh, this CRD simulation uh, approach is uh, computing the wave run up and the impact loading. Uh, these are uh, new capabilities that were not possible on uh, previous uh, potential flow based solver. So the old ways of uh, potential flow theory is, is not that is useless, it's actually very useful. But we can now uh, do a little bit more uh, accurate solution when we include a uh, wave breaking phenomenon, which is actually something that happened in, in the reality. So it's, uh, it's, it's just trying to, to account for such cases that were not considered in the past. So we have um, wave in the loads and inducing motion and deformation of the structure. Usually, it is uh, done together with the FEA tool. So the fluid will be computed in CFD. The waves are computed in CFD and produce some pressure loads on the structure. And the structure is uh, uh, the, the deformation and the loads on the structure are computed with an FEA code, which is this is the phenomenon I call fluid structure interaction. Uh, the prediction of the loads and forces as a wave interact with the structure, these include positively forces, negative down forces, and uh, the other mass forces are also part of the output that we extract. The interaction of the water with the uh, wave energy converters, turbines, wave barriers, and subsequent design optimization are also possible, as well as all the other elastic model development uh, for a wave interaction and analysis of wave vessel whipping and spinning. 
for slamming, slamming has been a topic of a long time history, and I, I have some something about that in the historic cases below. We'll see in a minute. But um, so the slamming has to be with the different situations. One, some of them I'm mentioning here, when the whole penetration after the development factoring out the vessels on how is it released and uh, will it, what, where areas will also what will be the best approach for releasing the, the vessel on the water and also analysis of a structure dropping into water like the example we saw we see in the right bottom right bottom corner with the example of a lifeboat a pressure impulse and induced stresses simulation during a vessel slammings. Uh, there is also a little bit about that in, in the study case a little bit later. Uh, prediction of heat point of effect for variating position of weight crests and throat. Um, the water entry due to green water runoff to improve design. So there are some things that can be done to uh, minimize and uh, reduce the weight loads on the deck. Um, I can mention some experience on that part too. Uh, vortex fluid motion induced induced vibrations. So there are several cases where it might be of interest to compute the vortex and mo uh, motions induced by the fluid, um, the motion of the structure induced by the fluid current or waves. Um, so we have the DF. SI from dynamic fluid structure interaction involving the fluid water and the ship hole structure of shock ground force and wind turbines are typically affected for that. A riser simulation, so we is that we very well know the phenomenon of BIB from border induced vibration uh, in uh, different uh, directions, um, uh, like inline, cross flow, and hybrid. Uh, that can be also computed in in CFD and uh, some co-simulation with FEA, or there are others approach to. Uh, spring and ring analysis is part of the uh, result that can be outcome or can be extracted from this analysis, as well as the global performance of the whole uh, due to current uh, wave in pinging. Um, for the Murray vessel um, fix, uh, the floating structures that uh, this information of uh, typically com computed or transported, converted into BOA, BOM from vortex induced motion uh, can be also extracted from those results. Okay, almost finishing now. Where this is um, uh, about the wind loading on vessels and dispersion. This area is uh, not many times taking into account is uh, many times ignored actually or neglected but yeah airflow uh, can also be computed and uh, included as a part of the design there are several reasons why we might be interested in looking at the, the wind loads and uh, from there we can of course this from this analysis we can of course get what's the drag force or improve the design optimization of my structure and um, maybe reduce or increase what's the topic of interest will be uh, the output of that drag to be used as a part of the structural design of typical fixed structures or other bodies. And the airflow distortion over deck, so there, there are some uh, uh, wind comfort uh, interest in uh, the deck side of the jet or cheap big chips the structure ventilation which might be both for safety reason or maybe for comfort as well as some accident releases like exhaust from fire and smoke uh, accidents and fuel or leaking releases of the, or dispersion parts okay uh, going uh, finally now to the state of the art in cfd technologies uh, this it has to be uh, so the reason why I include this slide is just to highlight what are the key parameters that I consider relevant to be able to uh, compute uh, 
process, uh, all the, the things I just mentioned before. So the, what are the key marine of offshore simulation features that you will need when you run CFD uh, for every one of these uh, topic of interest. So you definitely need to hand, handle a software able to handle uh, complex geometries. This is so fundamental. Nowadays it's possible. So when you hear someone in CFD is not possible to, to do uh, complex geometries that's not uh, right anymore. So nowadays it's perfectly possible. There are not just one, but several uh, CFD software very much capable to handle uh, complex geometries. And uh, on the top of that, of course, will be the grid, the grid adaptation and typical issues with the moving bodies. So you have, uh, it's very complicated grids and how how uh, the moving body on the top of that will be interacting. So there are several options. I mentioned here the rigid motion, the mesh morphing, and the overset. Those are three typical features that you may need for such cases when you deal with a marine or offshore application. And the physics uh, on the belly on the software are very much fundamental. Here are some of them, which is the volume of fluid. Advanced towards model is very, very important. The cavitation modeling is not always possible there, but yeah, so many times you, uh, so you always need to make sure that that modeling capability is there. And phase change, not just for cavitation, but for some other phenomena like uh, in the case of slamming or some others. Um, in multi-phase coupling, we typically deal also with the fluid structure interaction I mentioned. So that's part of the design. We wanted to look at the hole or the vessel and uh, how is it affect to do it to the water or wind load. So uh, that part will be computed with the coupling software. And the wave generation. Oh, the wave may, may need uh, in special point for them, that's why I included on here. Many times it is possible within the uh, software, the CFD software, however, some opportunities you uh, need to compute or generate your waves uh, outside. So let's make sure when you pick uh, the CFD software, what is the wave generation approach you will have and if it, it is covering your uh, wave of interest, your C stage of interest. Uh, the final topic that I don't want to leave it out is the design optimization and innovation. So there are some very good tools in the market for optimization that you may be able to use to improve your design just using some generic algorithms or other algorithms that are just looking what are the input and your output. That's all that this software do. You look at your input and your output and start playing with them with those algorithms to, to try to take the best uh, the best output according to your uh, key parameters of interest. The reason why I include this slide is because actually if you highlight, you can realize that there are like a two meshes, one in the background, another on the vessel going into a water. So you have uh, the VOF, which is the, the one of the multi-phase flow, but you also have a overset mesh, which is the other mesh of the body with running on the top of the mesh in the background. And also there are some four um, parts moving and some the mesh details. So uh, it is a, from the physics point of view, a meshing capability is a quite special example. and it, that's why I wanted to highlight those kind of things are possible. This is actually much more complicated than simple boat or ship simulation. Okay, just closing on here, we are now in the case studies. Um, this is a wave slamming on offshore planet force a, a model. I part, a, it comes from a paper I participated some years ago at OTC and it is, uh, uh, it is it, the development of the work was about a CFD and FEA copper analysis on fluid flow and structural deformation on a flooring platform. So we were looking at the wave slamming on rigid wall by breaking wave and wallet bullet. We, uh, 
I can explain what's the water bullet later, but just some water here in the platform. The rigid and elastic structure on web slamming conditions, as well as CFD for fluid domain and FEA for structure domain. The key interest of the project was to uh, look at the violent wave impact uh, and are, how sensitive are there to the shape of incident in the wave. So the hole is circular, so what will be the areas of mostly affected? So handling, to handle different type of wave types, uh, air entrainment and accounting other elastic effect. Uh, so this, this was a real project from a client, a, a big client that is able to uh, finance these uh, kind of structures. Um, yeah, so in this case, they were trying to, to find if we can get some input for the, the hydro, uh, hydrodynamic loads of, from the waves into the structure, and what will be the other elastic effect due to that. The imposing a special phase variation between hull and wave makes the study more complex. So um, this is a little bit about some, some details of the model. We run di different things were performed. One of them was the, the geometry and the, in the right, look at some nice panels that were uh, located into um, into a model test facility and we did the simulation of that and on the sensor details which is the picture on the middle shows some details of the sensor behind those panels which were uh, absorbing the loads of the waves impacting on this and the computational domain uh, which is the for the two cases we did the small case uh, with the loads onto a panel and the other big low on the real in the nine panels uh, load like it was done in the model there. So the result of that we came out with the instantaneous pressure before, during and after the wave impact as well as the impact pressure wave analysis on a scale model and trans translation to calibration of results to Full scale model. Of course, model tests are always done in, uh, in small scale. So we were looking at the model, model scale to be able to repeat all the environment conditions and then try to extract and extrapolate the information from there to full scale. There are some comparison of results there, as you can see, model tests and CFD analysis. So we look at those wave loads. Uh, and look at the different uh, combination of um, volume fraction of the liquid and the bubble of air, which is actually the three uh, color pictures at the bottom, is how a wave hit a, a plate and how the, the bubble, the air bubble inside of the wave is being compressed and, um, and provide different loads. So all of that has to be with the angle of operation. Small details about that are, as I mentioned, in OTC paper from my name to a couple of years ago. But just to, the intention of this is just to show how this is perfectly possible to match the experimental results and use that for design. The second and last uh, the case I'm presenting today is about marine resistance prediction. Uh, this is a work done by my colleagues from the city of Daco. We, we, uh, this is also available in a paper and the, the intention, as I mentioned before, a typical concern is how a resistance of a vessel can be minimized. So the ship vessel resistance plays an important role on defining the operability of the ship with respect to change in sea stages. So CFD analysis of vessel resistance trim and roll and various responses with respect to wave amplitude were computed. The motion of resistance analysis done with the 60 OF, so 60 degrees of freedom and studying the free surface changing in the near vicinity of the vessel with respect to vessel operation. So um, this, I think are more details on here about the model. The model, which I also perform, uh, is a 
is a well-known geometry that has been studied, uh, so measured several times for uh, calibration uh, of the chip resistance, and there are uh, available uh, measurements in the literature, so that's how we perform this work. And here are some details of uh, the geometry. So you, uh, in this case, we did half of the hole uh, and perform the, uh, place the hole in there and perform different measures, uh, computational measures like the one that you see on the bottom uh, with the hole on the middle and the current going actually through the, in the whole direction. So. Some details say on here the ship is more and place it inside the bonding box in which volume fraction of fluid is described. The free surface effects are counted using the volume of fluid approach and the trim hexagonal hexagonal grid is used for this case of interest. Some results are here. Um, uh, this is a little bit the boil the showing part of the solution and it, the information is available on the uh, on the paper uh, that they provide but also we did it for ourselves and we got the solution with the error of two percent with respect to measurements so that that is actually a very good example how a simple ship hole might be very well computed and uh, used for uh, design and optimization of the uh, whole performance. Uh, in this case, they were monitoring the roll, the trim, as well, together with the resistance. Okay, just now summarizing uh, our uh, comments from today, we, we conclude that CFD can provide solution to multiple marine uh, associated issues as well as answer effect from different design considerations that usually are not uh, taken into account or are being neglected just based in, in all practice. So I, I want to invite all of you to start using CFD for this capability and some of them are highlighted here. So whole sea keeping manual, manualability for high sea stages the other ones will be the propeller, rotor, and hole interaction can be included. That's actually very uh, good and very interesting approach that we can now do that. Uh, in the past, it was almost impossible unless you go to very small scale, but you have other issues of scale. Uh, in ship, fluid, water, and or the air flow resistance analysis can be performed. As I mentioned, air it was usually ignored. So now you can do both of them and add it up one to the other one and compute how, is, how, it, how much is the load, including the air. Uh, hole slamming and uh, wave run up, uh, only possible now because the CFD capabilities do high order waves computations in the past, it was not possible with potential flow theory. Vortex fluid motion induced like vibrations like springing and ringing are possible there. Tank slushing for all transportation of fluid as well as dispersion and uh, releases in uh, accidental releases. Uh, so the state of the RCFD technology allows to comprehend allows comprehensive geometry description analysis of real accurate design. So uh, this is actually a, a state of their computations that are now possible and I invite you to use it. And of course, the hardware which is required for that. And the final point is what if questions. So let's, let's look at all possible what if questions and how can we answer. Okay, uh, that's all that we have for today. Uh, thank you for attending the webinar. I'm uh, open to any question or comment that you may have. Uh, you can uh, do it through the chat or you can email me. Uh, thank you for your time.